I just want to talk about how I have a, uh, a timer, a little cheap timer, to operate a, uh, anything that requires the polarity to be reversed. In my case, it is a linear actuator. Um, so just to explain that, when I say the polarity to be reversed, what I mean is this linear actuator, uh, it requires a positive and a negative for that shaft to come out. But for it to retract back in, it needs that positive and negative to be reversed. So anything that requires that, uh, this little setup could work for it, whether it be a DC motor of any sort, whatever. Uh, in my case here, I'm using this actuator to open and close a door on a chicken coop. This way, uh, I don't have to be around for the chicken to be put up at night time. Uh, so I don't have no kind of a slaughter fest uh, with them, with coyotes or something. But uh, all you'll need here is a, a timer. This one's from Amazon. It's 10 bucks. The uh, part number is CN101A. Uh, we've got two five-blade relays and whatever motor of your choice. Uh, if you're going to plug it into a wall, you'll need a 12-volt uh, power supply. This one's a 5-amp. Um, also, you'll probably want to put on a 5-amp fuse. I'm going to do this here shortly. Uh, this way, if this, if this actuator uh, is uh, open or closing, in my case, a door, uh, which will require no power at all, but if, if it is and then something gets hung up in the door, uh, in my case a chicken, if it gets in there, uh, the chicken's going to be feeling it because this thing's pushed like 200 pounds. But if it really is putting the load out, it may go up to uh, 10 or even 30 amps. And uh, in that case, it'll probably uh, heat up these wires and possibly melt them or even catch fire. But So you'll want to put a fuse on here at whatever your power supply is rated at. Uh, this one's at 5 amps, so I'll put a 5 amp fuse on that. Uh, to get straight to it, we've got a wiring diagram here. I'm going to put it in the camera the best I can. That way you can pause and run from there, whatever you want to do. Uh, but I'm going to go over it real quick. In this case, I've got a the pink wiring is showing the positive lines off of the power supply. The blue is the negative. Yellow is the triggered positive out of the timer. And then our purple and orange are showing the linear actuator wires. The positive wire out of the power supply, we've got it run over here to the timer. Let me get it in the screen here. We've got the positive wire running over here to the timer at, at the positive channel on the timer. And then you want to jump a wire from that positive on the timer over to channel 5. Then we've got a, uh, another power uh, or, or positive line coming out going down, down to relay number 1 here at 87A. We've got one going down here to 87 of relay number two. Then our negatives, we have one run over here to the timer, of course. Uh, we have a line coming down here to both 86 and 87 on relay number one. And then we have one going to both 86 and 87A on relay number two. The triggered positive out of the timer on Channel number four here is going to come out and go to both of the 85s. So an 85 on the relay one and relay two. And after that, your 30s are all that are left on your relays. You just put those to your linear actuator. If you put this thing all together and that actuator um, goes outwards when it should be coming inwards, just reverse those wires and it should correct that issue. So uh, that's pretty much it. If, if that should get you from point A to point B. It's pretty simple setup. Um, if you care to learn exactly how we're doing this, I'll go over it real quick. Uh, you have to learn when, or, or you have to know what a relay is. So I'm going to kind of go over that real quick here. This, this is a, a regular five blade relay. And on this, if I can get this to focus, I'm not sure if I can. No, well, you just have to bear with me here. But in this case, we have uh, two figures here. One figure here on the left is showing the electromagnet inside. The one on the right is showing a circuit. The electromagnet is terminals uh, 86 and 85. You'll put a positive on one side and a negative on the other side to energize that magnet. Over here on the right, we have uh, terminal 30 is normally connected to terminal 87A. Once that magnet is energized, 30 will then be connected to 87. There's a little gate right here which will switch back and forth. Uh, in our case, we're doing a, uh, a reversal of the relays. So in this case, we need two. And how I have it done, they're, they're, they're wired almost uh, identically, uh, except for two terminals. So 
Uh, in this case, I have an 86 on both of these are permanent negative coming from the power supply. The 85 on both of these, which is going to the magnet, uh, are the triggered positive out of the timer. And our 30s on both of them go to uh, our wires for our actuator. And then the only difference is our 87 and 87A. So on this is going to be considered relay 1 and this will be considered relay 2. But on 87, uh, in this case it's a, a negative, 87A is a positive. Over here on relay 2 it is 87 is a positive, 87A is a negative. So basically negative, positive, positive, negative. And that should get you where you need to be. That way at the end of the day when these, these magnets are not energized, uh, we will be putting out a positive wire out of relay 1 and a negative wire out of relay 2. Once that magnet gets energized, they will flip over and we'll be putting out a negative wire out of, out of relay 1 and a positive wire out of relay 2. That's pretty much it. If, um, if you have any questions, just leave me a comment. If you like it, shoot a like or subscribe. If you hate it, I don't really know what to tell you. I'm sure somebody has something to say about it. Either way.